This episode of Ask a Spaceman is brought to you by Skillshare. Yes, my friends at Skillshare, it's an online learning community with thousands of classes for people like you and uh, like me. Honestly, it's a cool resource for me too. You can explore new skills, you can deepen some passions, and you can just get lost, which is always super fun. I especially recommend some categories along the lines of freelance and entrepreneurship, web development, productivity, to just get your awesome, creative, game-changing idea off the ground, especially the class Pricing Your Work, How to Value Your Work as a Freelancer by Peggy Dean. Valuable, valuable resource for helping you understand just how to how to charge for the awesome work that you do. And, and you deserve to make money, if I do say so myself. Look, uh, Skillshare is curated for learning, which means there are no ads, they're always adding new classes and you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than 10 bucks a month with a premium subscription. Speaking of subscriptions, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description of this video will get a free trial of premium membership so you can just do it. So speaking of curiosity, we're going to talk about fractals and fractals are everywhere like fractals are just they're just everywhere like like think of uh uh okay oh wait sorry i'm getting excited talking about fractals think of a snowflake and the, and we're going to use the snowflake to talk about like what is a fractal to get into this discussion snowflakes if you, if you look at it is this super cool pattern and then you zoom in on a tiny part of it and it looks like another snowflake and you enlarge it and you're like, well, I'm just looking at a snowflake again. And then you look at a tiny, tiny part of that and you zoom in on that and blow it up and you're like, well, I'm still looking at a snowflake. That is the best qualitative definition of a fractal. It's something that looks the same, has a self similar structure the more you zoom in or zoom out it doesn't matter your zoom level you still get relatively the same structure now fractals are just everywhere we got snowflakes we got trees you know you zoom in on the branches of a tree you see a little mini tree with mini branches you zoom in on a coastline and it looks like a little miniature coastline you zoom in on clouds and it looks like Clouds, mountains, river deltas, broccoli, uh, blood vessel flowers, lightning, seashells, stalagmites, and stalactites. Fractals are everywhere. They're just a part of nature. These self-similar structures. And so, maybe, just tossing this out here, folks. Maybe the whole entire universe is a fractal. Now, who would come up with a crazy idea like that? Well, none other than Benoit Mandelbrot himself, the guy who basically invented fractals. Now, now people have been studying fractals forever, but Benoit, and I'm going to call him Benoit because I have a really tough time with that last name, uh, and I don't want to butcher it for the rest of the episode. Benoit, he... And I like to think we're on a first name basis, even though he, he died years ago. Anyway, Benoit, he, he's like the father of modern understanding of fractals. People have been studying self-similar structures forever, but he's the one who invented the word fractal. Fractal means a, a fractured or fractional dimension. So if, if you look at, say, a line... That's a one-dimensional object. And then like a square is a two-dimensional object. But a fractal sits somewhere between there. Because if you look at something uh, like, like the Koch snowflake, where you draw a triangle in the middle of the line, and then at the segments of the triangle, you add more triangles, and then more triangles, and then more triangles. That's not quite one-dimensional because nowhere within that snowflake structure is there a continuous line segment. And the actual distance from one end to the other is infinity because you have to go over all these little infinitely tiny edges. But it's not a square either. It's not two-dimensional. It's somewhere in between. It's a fractional dimension, hence fractal. So Benoit, like as he was like going about inventing fractals and developing computer algorithms that gave us all this mathematical and descriptions of fractals and all the trippy visuals that go everywhere. They're so fun to watch. 
He's like, guys, maybe the universe is a fractal. I'm just putting it out there because I'm like Dr. Fractal over here. And I, th I think I think this is it. I think the universe is a fractal. Now, to, to ground that statement in, in something that we could test and observe, he had to extend something that we have long assumed in cosmology, the study of the universe. In our studies of the universe, we had assumed something called the cosmological principle. The cosmological principle is, is like the ground foundation on which we build our observations of the universe and our hypotheses and our theories of the universe. It, the cosmological principle says that the universe is homogeneous and isotropic. Two words. I know a lot of jargon, but you know we're talking about fractal cosmology here. Homogeneous means at big enough scales, if you draw a box around a big enough volume of the universe and you look at all the stuff inside that box and then you move that box around the universe, it should look pretty much the same. Like the individual arrangements might change, but a box over here will look pretty much like a box over there, like in some statistical or average sense. Like the, the average number of galaxies over here is going to be about equal to the average number of galaxies over here, over there. Isotropic means that the universe is going to look relatively the same no matter which direction you look. So you look up, you look at the universe way out there, you look down, you look at the universe way down there, and they look pretty much the same. Homogeneous and isotropic. Benoit added another statement to that, a fractal statement. He said maybe the universe looks the same no matter the scale. So if you zoom down in, you might see a certain arrangement or pattern of galaxies. And then you zoom out, you're going to see the same pattern repeated. And what you thought was a piece of the universe was just one tiny chunk of a much larger fractal structure. And then you zoom out even more and you see the same pattern repeated again and again and again, no matter how far you zoom out. That is fractal cosmology. Now, when... Benoit proposed this decades ago. We didn't know about the large scale structure of the universe. We had some indications, like we were starting to build galaxy surveys, we were starting to build maps, we were starting to pin down the locations of galaxies throughout the universe. But these were limited. These were like just relatively nearby in our universe. And so at that time, the fractal cosmology universe idea didn't seem bad because all we observed was like our galaxy, some nearby galaxies like Andromeda, and then there were some what we called field galaxies, just galaxies sc scattered around randomly. And then there were the big clusters of galaxies like the Coma Cluster, which was just a big group of over a thousand galaxies all hanging out together. And so you had galaxies and you had clusters. And it's perfectly reasonable to think like, okay, if you just zoom out, you're going to see uh, whatever arrangement of galaxies you have, you zoom out, you're going to see the same thing again. But then we started to do more intense galaxy surveys. We started to push further and further and further. So our maps of the universe became ever larger. And also we were able to get more sensitivity. So even the part of the universe closer to us, we were able to catch more of those dim, tiny little galaxies and we were able to fill it out. And we revealed that there is a pattern in the universe. That's right. The universe has a structure. We call it appropriately enough, the large scale structure of the universe. And we found that there's way more to this picture than just clusters and then random field galaxies. No, no, no. There are clusters. There are also long filaments of galaxies. Like imagine like a big rope made of a strings of galaxies and there are broad walls of galaxies. And then there are vast empty regions that we call the voids where there are like no galaxies at all as far as we could observe. we Another name for this structure is the cosmic web. This is the largest pattern found in nature. I mean, the cosmic voids are like hundreds of millions of light years across at a minimum. These filaments and walls are like uh, hundreds of thousands of light years long. The clusters are gigantic. They're like a million light years across. Like everything is just big. 
And we started to map out this cosmic web in like the early 1980s. We were first getting our first like solid picture of it. And at first glance, this looks like a universe that is not homogenous. Because if you draw a, a chunk of space around a cosmic void, it looks very, very different than a chunk of space around a cluster. And so maybe our universe was a fractal. Maybe when we see a cosmic web and then we zoom out, we would see an even larger cosmic web. And our cosmic web was just like some tiny part of that. And you zoom out even further and there's another cosmic web on top of that. And then another cosmic web. And like maybe Benoit's idea wasn't crazy. Maybe we live in a fractal universe. The way to test this, the way to observe this, is to see if there's any scale at all at which the universe becomes homogenous, right? We know that the universe isn't homogenous like on very, very tiny scales. Like if I draw a box around the earth, it looks very, very different than a box drawn around the space right next to the earth where it's absolutely empty. And our solar system doesn't look very much like the solar system next door. And our galaxy doesn't look very, uh, or looks very, very different than the like, empty patch of space right next to our galaxy. So we know that this homogeneity scale, the scale at which the universe starts to look homogenous has to be very, very large. Turns out it was larger than we thought. But if there's a scale, if you keep zooming out, if you keep making maps and all you see are larger and larger versions of cosmic webs, then that might lend credence to the idea that we do live in a fractal universe. So we have to observe a homogeneity scale, a box is big enough where things become uniform in order to put this idea of fractal cosmology to rest. And that's exactly what we did. But we didn't, weren't able to do it until relatively recently where we had big enough galaxy surveys to actually map this. And then we finally figure out that the homogeneity scale is around, you know, plus or minus, but it's like 300 million light years across. If you start drawing boxes that are around 300 million light years across, and then you compare the contents of that box to another box of the same size, it looks pretty much the same. The fact that there is a homogeneity scale to the universe where everything looks the same means that we don't live in a fractal universe. Because you can reach a scale where you don't get bigger and bigger cosmic webs, you just get more of the same stuff. That said, the key ideas behind fractal cosmology aren't exactly dead because there are parts of the universe that still look kind of sort of like a fractal. Like, like most, all the fractals found in nature aren't fractals on an infinity of scales as small or tiny as you get. Like you can zoom in on a tree and get little mini branches and then sub branches, but then you're going to run into like cellulose in plant cells, in chlorophyll, and that doesn't look like a tree. And if you zoom out too far, you're just gonna get a forest, which doesn't look like a tree at all. So the, that fractal idea only exists in a certain limited set of scales, and that is true for our universe. So for example, if you look inside of a galaxy cluster, a galaxy cluster is mostly made of dark matter. It's a big giant ball of dark matter. But inside that big giant ball of dark matter are a bunch of tinier balls of dark matter. And these tiny balls host the galaxies. And then inside of those, you'll find tinier balls of dark matter. We call them halos, not balls, by the way, but I thought this would be more amusing. So you get like balls inside of balls inside of balls or halos inside of halos inside of halos. Uh, another example, you can look at the cosmic voids. These vast expanses of almost absolutely nothing do in fact contain some galaxies, but they're very, very dim and very, very small. But when you map out, if you stare at an individual void and you map out the galaxies inside the void, you get a little miniature cosmic web. It's very faint and very dim, but it's there, right there. And we've explored this in simulations if you take that cosmic void, the void, look at the web inside of it, and then take a piece of it, a sub-void, and zoom in on that, you'll find a little faint cosmic web inside of there. And this can go on for quite a few levels. So there are places in our universe that do have fractal-like properties, but the universe as a whole is not a fractal. 
unless unless we live in a multiverse, right? There are these ideas of inflation, of uh, the very earliest moments of our universe, this dramatic event where our universe became exceedingly large very, very quickly and when it was less than a second old. There are some ideas of inflation called eternal in inflation, where the inflation that led to our Big Bang, that led to our universe, wasn't the only one. That this process is happening continuously throughout the universe for all of time and that there is some distant region of our universe that is currently now nucleating a little bubble that will then inflate and become a universe on its own and then inside of that universe there'll be a little nucleation point and that will bubble and that will create a new universe and then inside of that so you get these like infinite nested universes that we call the multiverse that certainly qualifies as a fractal because you have universes inside of universes inside of universes and you can keep zooming out in both space and time and get to see this fractal embedded structure. We don't know if the multiverse exists. We're pretty sure that the event of inflation happened, but we don't know if eternal inflation is the right idea. So maybe, so, so for now, let's say this, for now, fractal universe is not a thing. There are parts of the universe that look like fractals, but fractal cosmology is not really it. If we do live in a multiverse, we'll talk again. Thank you so much for watching. Please go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter to keep supporting the show. And I will see you next week. And like and share and subscribe. Do all the, you know, the usual YouTube stuff. I really do appreciate it.